What up world, this is The Goal Net, recording live here from outside Chicago. And today's video is the deep dive on the CCM Jet Speed FT2 Goalie Skate, first of its name. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Uh, CCM has aligned the goalie skates pretty well with their player skates now. So they've got a tax model and a jet speed model that both have their no outsole technology. And at first blush, looking at this skate, probably the first and most obvious thing you're gonna notice is the XSG holder. That is CCM's first goalie skate available with no cowling. Um, and you may be looking at me wondering why I'm so excited. The reality is, is this technology has been in the marketplace for three full years and has just had its fourth birthday. But it's great to see that CCM has entered into this market. And for me, following goalie equipment for as long as I have, um, I feel like it seems like there's certain waves where each company is really leading the edge and um, you know, kind of takes back the throne as having the best skate on the market. And I really hope um, you know, that with CCM's newest entrance here, um, that puts some, some pressure on the competition and we keep seeing better and better skates coming out year over year. Um, so for anybody that would had been kind of sleeping on CCM for the last couple of years because they did not have the no cowling technology, hopefully you'll be very pleasantly happy with what you go and see in the store and hopefully it'll be worth the wait. So let's take a deep dive into these skates. So as I mentioned a moment ago, this skate is built with CCM's no outsole technology also known as a true one-piece boot. And this is called the Light Frame 360 Evo. And the actual material used here is called the Rocket Frame material. This will be different from the tax gate. The CCM AS1 tax line uses um, a material that they refer to as a composite. So if you still don't quite understand what a one-piece boot is or what I'm showing you is if we look at this edge right here, there would traditionally be a seam in the skate where the upper um, would join the outsole or the lower portion of the skate, and then the holder would be attached to that outsole. And as you can see here, pieces like the toe cap, um, this wear strip here in the boot are wrapping directly onto it, and the cowling is mounted directly to that excuse me, the no cowling, the blade holder is mounted directly to that. So what this means is a few different things. First and foremost, um, there's gonna be no, what I would call stack up inside the skate. So what I mean by stack up is that we're gonna have an outsole, I guess even back up a step further, we're gonna have a holder, then we're gonna have an outsole on top of that, and then underneath the outsole, we're gonna have glue. And then there's gonna be a piece of the boot that would wrap around underneath the skate that the outsole would be mounted to. And then there may be some stitching as well to bind that together. And what that means is that all of those different elements can come into play to cause some inconsistency, um, skate to skate. And then secondarily, um, it should improve the fit of the skate because essentially every time there's a seam or a glue area, um, there's essentially a gap where you cannot get the boot as close to your foot um, as would be theoretically desirable. So this should improve the skate of the, the improve the fit of the skate and ensure that there's, um, you know, no gaps in the boot as much as possible. And then lastly, when we talk about performance, anywhere that there's a seam or there's glue or there's stitching, that's kind of like a weak point on the skate, um, and that could be a loss of energy transfer. Um, so with this technology here, when you push, all of that energy should be very efficiently transferred down into the skate blade, which is not installed on this skate right now. We'll get to that in a second. So this should improve the goalie's performance on the ice as well. So it's gonna improve the fit, it's going to improve the performance, and those are both two key things that you should be looking at when you're buying a skate. As we move down to the new no cowling blade holder, this is CCM's XSG. Uh, the G denotes goalie and the player's version of the jet speed skate has an XS holder as well. So for this holder, um, it does have a removable runner and CCM has gone with a dial on this. So as you can see, when I rotate the dial, a locking pin pops out of the skate here. And then when I close, 
the dial and you can see that takes all about three or four seconds. The locking pin is now flush inside the skate and it's hidden away um, and it'll lock into your skate's runner. And what was the design goal of all this and why do we see this roller? CCM's goal with coming out with the removable runner technology in both the player skate and the goalie skate was to ensure that the blade does not fall out during play. Um, I think we've all seen games on TV, you know, where a defenseman loses a runner in the middle of a game, has to kind of get over to the bench on one foot, or most notably, Tuka Rask last year in the playoffs lost a runner and literally threw it at the ref. Um, pretty memorable as a goalie. So the goal of CCM's technology here with the XSG and the runner and that locking pin I showed you is that when that locking pin is not visible, your skate should be fully locked in and there should be no chance that this runner is gonna pop out during play. But if you're a goalie that likes to change runners on the fly, you damage a runner, etc., in about three seconds, you should be able to stop and pop that runner out. And as we very crudely hold up the XSG Black Speed Blade onto the front of the skate, what I'm just trying to illustrate is that when we spin this dial, this locking pin is basically physically sliding through the rotary dial into this notch in the skate right there. And that's how they ensure that it doesn't pop out during use. So that is gonna be one of the, you know, CCM's key differentiators here with their XSG holder, um, essentially the no cowling technology for the first time on a CCM skate. One other thing I didn't touch on with the no outsole, we got a vent port there on the bottom of the skate. So as we look at the runner itself, so the runner itself will be coated in a black coating that is designed to increase the life of the blade. This will give you a few different benefits as a user of this skate blade. First and foremost, um, it should be less susceptible to small dings in the post um, and overall kind of general wear with uh, the ice. So hopefully that translates into a second benefit which is less sharpening. Uh, hopefully you're able to go longer between sharpenings with this skate. And then the third benefit of that is that hopefully that this steel should stay nice and tall longer um, than a traditional steel without the coating. And I've also noticed that this steel is nice and tall, so I would suspect that you can get a lot of sharpenings out of it. And then we talk about performance benefits of the taller steel. is a tack angle and where we have the nice tall steel on this skate um, we should be able to you know get our blade into the ice nice and early and that will lead to powerful pushes when we're already down in the butterfly and we need to recover or we need to slide across in the butterfly to make another save um, as well as it should enable us to get a harder faster push as well um, so tack angle isn't anything new per se um, but something definitely worth noting that given the nice tall steel on this and the coating, which should ensure that you have a good edge at all times, um, you should expect to be able to have a really nice push with this skate. So one of the other things I noticed lacing these skates up for the first time was the lace bite pad, which CCM calls the Tri-Tech Flex Zone with molded lace bite protection. That is a mouthful. Um, however, you can just hear that hopefully coming through in the video. So although I can't see it, um, when it says molded, that means that there's actually a hard tool created most likely out of steel and then a molten material, probably plastic, I'm assuming just based on how hard that was, is pulled, poured into the tool. Um, and then it's formed into the shape. If it's injection molded, there's actually some pressure in the process. Um, which can actually help make a plastic flex and give it really good durability at the same time. So that is one of the subtle things I noticed. I'm never a guy who's really had too many issues getting lace bite, um, but for if you are, you know, this is again, just one of the first things I noticed lacing these things up is this is a beastly uh, lace bite pad. And then as well, we've got a traditional pretty beefy felt tongue. And as we zoom in on the inside here, you can see that mine say 3D custom molded. I will touch on that at the end. And then inside these skates, um, there's a couple upgrades I did. So I changed out the traditional laces for the Howie's wax laces. 
um, just because I liked wax laces over the standard laces. That's 100% a preference thing. Uh, one of the reasons I just call out the Howies is that um, I found that these laces stretch less over time and you're able to tie your boot very tightly and consistently skate after skate. Um, and I was actually pretty loyal to Elite Laces before this, so it's been a pretty big change for me that um, I've been a huge benefit um, from just in terms of the skates staying nice and tight use over use. And as we go back to the frame, um, you'll notice that the rivets are mounted directly into the rocket frame composite material. Um, so these might move a little bit when you get the when you get the boot molded. And then as I talked about earlier, you know, the goal is to kind of minimize the different assembly pieces inside this skate to ensure that it's uh, maximum fit, maximum energy transfer, and putting the rivets directly into, you can see those are actually stamped with the CCM logo. Uh, getting that directly into the frame is a really nice touch here. One of my other favorite things about the CCM skate, um, just from kind of a conceptual thing, is the uh, asymmetric flex stance. So this is actually technology that debuted last year on the Tax AS1 skate. And a lot of times, um, these companies try and differentiate the products and have distinctly different lines at retail. You get one good idea ends up on one skate line and not another. And obviously the goal is to have different options available to different consumers at retail. But when something's a good idea, um, it's nice to see it transferred through all the product line. So I'm really happy to see that CCM put the asymmetric flex stance on the FT2 skate um, is, instead of kind of leaving it maybe a traditional even high cut. And as you can see, um, the front of this where the rivet is, is probably um, you know, a little bit above the flex zone there in the Achilles area. Um, so uh, that's part of what that design is. And then there's a notch on the inside of the ankle that's not on the outside of the ankle. So if we talk about the technology side of things, this is designed um, to help goalies get very, very deep in their stance and get a quick recovery in and out of the butterfly. So that's some stuff that when I do a follow-up video uh, talking about the actual functionality of these skates, I will definitely try and touch on if I found that to be good or not, but just on a high level, um, I'm happy to see that CCM designed something that they really believe in and put it on both their product lines. As you can see, we've got the uh, rolled edges there so that you're not gonna have the seams kind of irritating your ankles. I'm a guy who doesn't actually wear socks under my skates, so I greatly appreciate that. And then as we move inside um, the skate here as well, it's got CCM's total dry material right there. This is gonna be a black moisture wicking material. And this brings me to one of the other points I instantly noticed about these skates, aside from the no cowling like the lace bite pad. And this is probably very hard to get on camera, but hopefully it comes through. The gel inside these skates is very, very soft and supple, and it does really lock your heel in. So uh, I was very surprised. Like I said, I really hope this is coming through in the video, but that was one of the things, you know, like I knew this skate had a no cowling before it came uh, to me, but I was very surprised um, to notice the lace bite pad and how soft and supple the gel is inside the skate. And the other thing inside the boot here is the dual zone kind of abrasion. And this is basically just to ensure that this area of the skate wears very well. Um, and that's why it doesn't have the dry material, but basically the dry material starts in the ankle and runs all the way the length inside of the skate here. Anybody that uses a Lundy loop, um, these skates will have a Lundy loop on it as well. So you can loop um, the boot strap through the heel of the skate as well. I go no bootstrap. Um, I've used the Lundy loop a few times just to try it on different models of skates, but that is not something that I currently use. And I know goalie's biggest questions a lot of times when they go with a no cowling skate is the toe cap. I can promise you that CCM has tested this. They do have a puck cannon inside their facility that fires things around 100 miles an hour. I've physically seen this with my own eyes. So you can trust that CCM has done the impact validation, hit these toe caps with pucks and ensured that nothing is going to break. Um, and, you know, that's just kind of the level of safety um, that's required when you go to a no cowling skate. 
A couple of the other features, um, plastic piece here. This will just kind of ensure that the post doesn't rub up against your boot and cause any wear or any damage to the rocket frame material. And then you can see there um, some rivets. That's actually how they physically attach the toe cap to the skate as well. And then another uh, molded plastic piece here. You can see kind of the 3D ridges, um, you know, in the wear zone there where, you know, as you're coming in and out off the ice, uh, this is definitely an area that can touch the ice. So that plastic piece there is designed to help protect the composite material. So let's touch on the insole a little bit more. So as far as the insoles go, you'll see I have the yellow CCM OrthoMove insole. And then on my right is the standard CCM OrthoLite insole, which comes standard. With the standard insole, um, you can see there's two different colors, grays. Those are two different types of foam. The darker charcoal gray here is a soft foam versus the lighter gray here is a firm foam um, in your forefoot and back in the arch. And then on my right is the OrthoMove insole which in that same area um, has a plastic insert with a carbon weave effect. That is a textured pattern um, from the mold. From what I can tell, that's not actually a separate material inside the skate. And then CCM has their adjustable high arch here. So as you can see, this is labeled high. Um, inside the package for these, you will also get a medium arch. So depending on how your skate fits, or excuse me, depending on the shape of your foot and then how that fits inside the skate, you can actually adjust which arch style you have, so it's pretty cool technology. So if you have a normal foot, um, you may not need to upgrade to these. This is an aftermarket product. This does not come standard inside the skate, but I've recently had an opportunity um, to have my feet scanned for some other stuff and have learned a bunch more about my feet lately. And I have really high arches and I've actually been doing myself a disservice most of my life, not using something with a bit more arch support. So that's why I upgraded to these. Um, so that's not to say there's anything wrong with it. This is just something personally take care of me and my unique foot shape. So when we talk about foot shape, um, that brings me to my next point, which is get scanned at the store because there's two lines of skates for a reason. So first and foremost, companies have two lines of skates because everybody's foot in the world, every single person has a different foot with a unique shape. So when it comes to tax and when it comes to jet speed, there are two different fits designed to fit different people's feet. So that is the important part. If you can, you live near a shop, go get the skates tried on. And if you're gonna buy the high-end pro level skates, jump on and get the foot scan done. And the technology that CCM's invested in their iPad app will take um, basically a picture of your foot from 360 degrees. The iPad has a special sensor on it um, that will help the computer basically make a quick CAD file of your foot. And then that will give you a best fit recommendation based on the unique shape of your foot. So definitely take advantage of that. So if you're going to go that route, you get your foot scanned, you get the skates out of the back, they bake them, you tie them up, 10 minutes later you take the skates off, you walk out of the store, and boom, you own it. And if you're in that case, it's very important, um, you know, if the recommendation is a jet speed, try the jet speed on, make sure that feels good. However, if you are looking for kind of the next level of fit, CCM has something which I went through with this, and it's called the 3D Custom Molded Program. And you can see was able to get my uh, TGN initials in the skate with that program. And with that program, CCM will actually make a physical representation of your foot. They will stick it inside the skate. They will tie the skate up and then they will put it into a special machine that heats up the rocket frame um, or the tax boot. And then we'll actually put like a rolling device that goes over the skate and will actually apply, apply pressure and stretch the skate out um, to better fit your foot and kind of close any gaps that you might not get in retail. And one of the reasons that you may get some retail gaps is that when you're tying the laces here, basically all the pressure is here. And if you need a little bit, um, you know, of uh, some kind of gap, um, you know, get rid of the negative space back in the heel, there's nothing putting the pressure back here. But if you watch the video with like Brent Burns, they show the process very briefly you know, you, they're rolling over the whole skate 
and that's to ensure um, that this is kind of that next level fit. So if you're looking for an upgraded fit over the retail experience, that's where the 3D Custom Molded comes into play. One other area that can come into play is something I personally experienced, and this kind of contradicts what I said a moment ago, but please realize um, when I'm demoing gear, I'm always, you know, have the opportunity to check out the latest products. So I'm trying to create content with it as well and educate everybody about what's new. So sometimes I wear stuff that isn't technically correct for me. And that's where the jet speed boot comes into play. If you watched my video, uh, I was actually recommended into a tax boot, but went with the jet speed anyway to go with the latest for the sake of content. And I can say that even though um, I'm a tax fit, with CD Sam's custom molded program where they made my foot, stuck it in this exact skate and then stretched it around my foot to fit it, I found that the fit of this skate in the ankle and the heel area where people can traditionally have problems um, with slipping, sliding, things like that, I've got no issues to date. And the fit was so good from the block of foam um, with the 3D custom molding. And when I say block of foam, it's a piece of high density foam that they use to actually create your physical foot and stick it inside of the skate that I never did a rebake. And as I mentioned, I changed the insoles. So it's pretty crazy that wore these skates out of the box, changed insoles um, and the fit, you know, again, in the ankle and the heel where you're worried about the heel lock has been that good. So strongly recommend checking out three, the 3D custom molded program from CCM. And one other thing I should note too, when I talk about being a tax foot and getting away with a jet speed, um, I have what they call a pretty neutral foot, like I'm a D width, it's nothing crazy. Um, I don't have very weird feet. So that's one of the other reasons I'm able to pretty easily jump back and forth um, between models of skates versus some of you may be watching this video and saying, man, you know, model X is the only thing that fits my foot. There's no way I could change. That brings me to CCM's last offering, which is a total custom. Um, that's where they actually take an individual skate and custom make it for you. So this skate here was a generic skate that ended up at CCM instead of like your local, you know, pure hockey or the goalie crease on the shelf waiting for you to come try it on. And then once they made my foot, they put it in that standard retail skate, stretched it and baked it. If you go with the total custom program, you will actually get a made in Canada skate that was uniquely made for you. So if you have a tax foot, but you want a jet speed, um, and some of the issues might be volume, they can actually add volume. Um, when I say adding volume, that's a little bit more material so that these rivets will be up there instead of back here. You can get different widths, so wider skates if you need that. Um, so that, and then once they kind of custom assemble the skate for you based on your specs, they will still go through, make your foot, put it inside the boot, and then do the stretching and molding process that I talked about a few minutes ago. So if you're somebody that has a tax foot and you've tried on the jet speed in the store, there's no way it fits, but you really want the jet speed because of, um, you know, say the rocket frame material or the XSG holder, um, you can definitely check out that program. And that is one other good point to note is that the XSG holder is available via CCM's total custom program with the tax boot. So if you want to get a tax boot with the XSG holder, you can do that via CCM's total custom program. So I think we've hit on most of kind of the new tech with this skate. We've explained the 3D and custom molded versus an in-store bake versus the total custom program. I think the last thing left to do here is throw this skate up on the scale and just see where we're at weight wise. So right now, I'd say just my kind of general rule of thumb um, is probably somewhere around 900 grams is kind of that area where I feel like a, a skate feels light or heavy. You know, we get way under 900 grams, it feels nice and light. Um, if we're too far over 900 grams, like say a skate with a cowling, um, that's when a skate can start to feel heavy. All right, so we're gonna weigh the assembled skate, we're gonna weigh the boot only, and then lastly, we'll weigh the runner just to kind of get an idea how much things weigh. So putting this on, we're seeing that this comes in um, at exactly 1,000 grams. So still very light with no cowling. Um, and I should also note that this is a very big skate. Um, this is a size 
11 skate um, versus I typically get at 10. So that was kind of one of the interesting things coming out of the molding process. I will touch base on that when I do the review, but I did try and kind of go with um, whatever the skate recommendation went with. So this is a little bit skewed. Um, this is a light skate, um, but I just kind of point that out because it's not apples to apples with some of my other skates that weigh you know, somewhere around 900 grams. And then this also has the very tall steel. And one other good point too, maybe I didn't touch on is if you do do the 3D custom bake, now that the jet speed is out, I would definitely recommend trying on the skate that you're gonna buy in the store before you have it baked, just to make sure that you kind of like the, um, you know, the length of the skate and everything starting out with it there. Um, versus when I got these, it was pre-release, so it didn't have anything to try on and compare it. So now let's measure the boot only. So to kind of reiterate my point earlier, um, this boot is only 762 grams, so that is a very light boot, um, which kind of gets back to my point. This skate does feel light in your hands. If you couldn't tell watching the video, I was a little surprised um, with that 1,000 grams reading before. But again, I think that that was mostly due to the uh, bigger skate size that I'm used to and the longer steel. And then lastly here, we can see that the steel is coming in at about 169 grams. And just for reference, I believe I've only gotten these sharpened once, so we are still pretty much riding on full height steel here. So again, as we see the boot coming in at 761 grams, I have to really dive in and go over some notes, but that I believe might be the lightest boot only on the market, um, or if it's not, it is pretty close. And one of the reasons I'm being a little wishy-washy and not diving into that is that the CCMs are a size larger um, than what I'm normally used to buying. So it is a little bit tough for me to do apples to apples comparison. One of the other interesting things to note too is if you figure this skate weighed about a thousand grams um, and the blade was about 170 grams, basically 17% of the skate's weight is just in the runner itself. Um, so hopefully that illustrates how light this boot really is because I don't want to undersell that. Um, this is an incredibly light boot. Um, you know, it's basically you know, gonna be as light as anybody else's, if not the lightest. So CCM has really done a nice job there. So overall, um, you can expect to see the review for me sometime within the next couple of weeks. Would like to get a couple more skates in on these. Um, could do a review now. Um, but the quick recap, we've got the XSG holder with the roll dial, so we should get no steel pop out. We've got the light frame 360 technology here, um, which is the no outsole. We've got the thermoformable rocket frame material that's available with a standard in-store bake with the 3D custom molded or CCM's made in Canada total custom. Um, we've got a really nice hard lace bite pad here, traditional felt tongue, and the play dry material um, inside the skate as well, and the asymmetrical ankle. So this has been CCM's FT2 Skate, and this is the Golnet signing out. Thanks for tuning in. Please throw me a subscribe if you don't mind, and also feel free to check out thegoalnet.com or at thegoalnet on Instagram.